Hi there. Today we're looking at Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 44. Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 44. Pause the video, have a read, and we'll chat about it. Uh, so again, even if you've not read much of the Bible before, you may well have heard about the loaves and fishes miracle. Uh, and here we see Mark's account of that uh, right here, or one of the two accounts of it, actually. There's another one a bit later on um, in Mark's Gospel. Um, and, uh, but there's a few things to notice about that, isn't there? Uh, firstly, is that, uh, is that it begins with the apostles giving a report uh, to Jesus of their activities. Remember how he sent them out um, in uh, chapter 6, verses 7 to 12? Uh, told them what to do, and they came back and uh, they said um, uh, they came back and kind of reported back to Jesus what he'd done. Um, and uh, there was such a crowd of people around all the time. This is Jesus is very popular at this point uh, that uh, he says, "Let's go find a quiet place." So they went away by themselves. We're told in a boat to a solitary place, but unfortunately, they can't get away that easy. Uh, we have seen the way people who are popular, uh, especially today. Uh, cannot find a moment's peace, uh, and sometimes it can be quite oppressive for them. I think, uh, and here's just just such an instance here with Jesus, where he can't uh, find uh, a moment's peace to himself. But his reaction at that point is not to get angry at them, or to get upset with them, or to uh, to yell at them. Uh, in fact, it is to have compassion on them, uh, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He realises that the reason they follow him is because they're looking for something. They're looking for, you might say looking for leadership or looking for uh, satisfaction. But in the end, what they're really looking for is looking for, they have a spiritual yearning to know God and spiritual yearning to, to know that they're right with God or how to be right with God. Uh, they, they want to see God's kingdom come, but they don't know where it's going to come from and they're, and they're, they're lost without it. Uh, they're like sheep without a shepherd. They have no leader. And so Jesus, rather than yell at them, rather than get upset with them, rather than run away again, begins to teach them. He teaches them for so long that it gets to be late in the day and they've got nowhere to, and uh, they've got to go back home to get some food. Um, uh, and his, in fact, his disciples say, look, Jesus, we're, sort of, we're, we're kind of in the wilderness a bit here in a remote place. Go send them away. Uh, and Jesus uh, says, no, we should give them something to eat. Um, uh, but there's too many people, far too many people to buy enough to eat. Uh, and so uh, they're kind of stuck. But Jesus takes the five loaves of bread and two uh, fish they have, uh, which is not a lot um, for the 5,000 people who are there. Uh, and uh, he says, well, go sit them down in hundreds and fifties. Uh, he gives thanks breaks the loaves, uh, and uh, in, a, in, a, in a kind of well-known miracle, everyone has enough. There are, in fact, 12 basketfuls left over. And we're told the number of men who were eaten was 5,000. We're not told, uh, a lot of people think that means there were probably many more there, uh, women and children as well. Uh, whatever the number is, there was a huge number of people. 12 basketfuls of food left over. They had more food at the end than when they started. Now, some people have said, oh, this was a miracle of sharing. Someone shared their lunch and Jesus gave thanks for it and everyone else thought, oh, I've got all my lunch here too. I better share that as well. That's not what happened here. This is the Lord of the universe once again showing his power over nature and being able to deal with hunger. This is the Lord of the universe feeding uh, the uh, people of God, the harassed, helpless people of God in the wilderness miraculously. Uh, some of those who were there must have thought about how God had once before fed his people miraculously in the wilderness all those years ago when they came out of Egypt in the Exodus. Here Jesus is saying and showing that he comes with God's power and does what only God can do. In fact, he's saying in a way, that Jesus comes as God. And did you notice he comes not to lord it over people, but he comes as someone with compassion, who sees people who are lost and struggling 
And rather than uh, look down on them or rather than get angry at them, he helps them. He teaches them. He has compassion on them. And he does something about it. Isn't it great to know that Jesus has that kind of power, has that kind of power as God, and has the kind of love that God has for people who are lost and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Isn't it great that Jesus has that power even today? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he has uh, He had compassion. And thank you that he had the power to deal with those, uh, to help those people. Um, thank you that Jesus' compassion extends to us today. Thank you that he, uh, through his death on the cross, uh, shows his love for us, his compassion for us, and saves us. Thank you that through his death on the cross, he shows that he has the power to save us. And Father, please continue to remind us of, your, of his power today. Continue to help us to put our trust in him. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow.